Welcome everyone to our webinar, uh, Five Ways to Supercharge Your Startup Business. Um, I will give everybody a minute or two to just uh, trickle in here before we get started. Right, I see some people piling in. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's get started. So, for those of you new to our webinars, ooh, yep, here we go. All right, so for those of you new to our webinars, uh, welcome. My name is Casey McGuigan. I am the product owner of Slingshot. I am lucky enough to have been able to be with the product uh, since the beginning. Uh, so any questions that you might have about the webinar or um, Slingshot itself, do not hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, you can see my email there, kcm at slingshotapp.io. All right, so diving into today's agenda here, uh, we're gonna cover, of course, the five ways to supercharge your startup business. Uh, but within these topics, we will cover things like ways to optimize growth and customer acquisition, techniques to improve marketing performance of your campaigns, strategies for brand building and talent management, useful platforms for streamlining your operations, and some advice on aligning your goals and getting the results that really you deserve. Um, and then just some small housekeeping is after the webinar, uh, the recording will also be made available. Um, but also please do not hesitate as we go through to ask any questions within the uh, Q&A window. All right, so let's get started with the five ways to supercharge your startups. We'll dive into each one of these a little bit more, but let's touch on them briefly from a high level here. So starting with establishing product market fit. This is essential to starting your startup. Without the need in the market for you to fulfill with your product or your service, how can you expect people to purchase or buy in? This is what finding product market fit is really all about and that'll be one of the first things that we look at. From there, uh, you need to have a journey that is planned and mapped out from your target audience to their pain points and how and where you will market to them. You must effectively research and plan all of these moving parts to ensure you spend your time and money wisely when you're promoting your products and services. Growth hacking is something that we live and die by here at Slingshot. Uh, growth hacking is how you acquire new customers, increase stickiness, uh, retain customers, and increase revenue. We will also dive into the growth hacking process in a bit as well. Next, brand building and talent management. While this can be um, two kind of totally different things, they can also go hand in hand. You need great talent to build great products and services. Your talent, you want happy employees, and then these employees go off and they talk highly about your products and services. They expand your brand through word of mouth. And if you are not expanding your brand awareness out in the market, how do you expect to grow, right? And finally, the need to use effective tools to manage and run all of your operations for your company's moving parts is, of course, essential. Um, from marketing to sales and products, you all need to manage your internal teamwork and you all need to have conversations that are both for your internal teams as well as cross-department and team collaboration. So starting a, um, a business from scratch is, of course, one of the most rewarding things that a person can do. But as everybody on this webinar, I am sure already knows, it's also not easy. Uh, so according to Demand Sage, the United States is home to the most startups, with approximately 70,000 startups being created every year in the U.S. alone. That's a ton of new startups every year. Unfortunately, nine of 10 startups do fail with the most common reason being a lack of a clear need for their company's product or service in the market. This is where finding product market fit is first and foremost comes into play. First, 
just to make it super clear, to find product market fit, you need to define first who your target customer is and what their undeserved needs that you will be offering them a solution for are. Product market fit means your product solves a big enough problem with the right solution for your customers. And you can kind of see that visually within this diagram here. But how can you find product market fit? Let's go through the five steps. First, find your target customer. Who will buy your product or service? How will you meet their needs? Even if you don't know yet who your target customer is, you can also you can find out through market research and then you can use that research to then create a persona. Identify unsolved problems. It's very difficult to sell a product or service in a crowded market of existing solutions that people might already be happy with as well. A better approach would be to find their what exactly they're unhappy with. What pain do your current um, does your target customer have? Maybe pain that they don't even know that they have yet. And how can you help them solve that? Step three. Find your MVP. Uh, define the minimum feature set for offering um, within your product or service that you're willing to launch and go to market with. Then, test a prototype with real customers. Before building, seek feedback from, at a minimum, five customers that fall into your target audience through prototypes. This will then start to give you a good idea whether your idea is worth pursuing or not. And finally, value proposition. Here you'll define how your product or service meets your customer needs better than the alternatives that they have today or that they don't have. They might have nothing. Um, is it better quality? Is it easier to use? Is it more affordable? Are there differentiating features that you have maybe that others don't have? This will then help you build the messaging for the content you need to market your product. Okay, so now that we've defined product market fit, you need a plan. We've gone through the idea and testing phases, so now how do you get to growth, how do you get to expansion, and eventually maturity? Um, well, with a detailed plan, of course. This includes researching and defining where your target market um, and where your target customers are that you wanna market to. Um, do they spend time on social media? If they do, what platforms are they on? Are they on Twitter? Are they on LinkedIn? Do they use Facebook? Um, what keywords are they searching for and what do the volumes of those keywords look like? Um, so for any tools that they are looking for, what exactly are they searching? Um, for any pain that they might have, what are they searching through Google and stuff like that? Where do they get their news? Like where should you be putting your product in the face of your target market? Then you need to plan and define the messaging and the creatives and everything that you are going to use to promote your product in those places. And then from there, we can move into growth hacking and really grow, which we will be getting into soon. Okay, so I mean, sometimes with the chaos and excitement uh, around getting your startup off the ground, detailed plans can fall through the cracks, but they really are critical uh, to keeping your entire team on the same page. So when you're defining your plan, it's also very essential that you back your plan up with SMART goals, because how else are you going to measure your success, right? So SMART goals make it clear to the team where they need to invest their time um, and how to measure success, really. And as you can see here on the slide, uh, when you're setting these goals, you really wanna make sure that they are smart, right? Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. Without these characteristics, you kinda just be setting unachievable goals that you can't track, uh, which isn't good, right? So let's move into growth hacking. Now this is my favorite because it really does capture almost everything that you need in a single process in a way. Uh, so first from a high level, before we even dive into the um, growth hacking process, 
We wanna make sure that we have found product market fit, we have defined our North Star metrics, we've built our growth hacking team, and we've kind of kicked off an ongoing process that we've defined. So we kind of talked about product market fit, um, your North Star metric. Uh, this is the data point that most predicts your company's success. Uh, so this could be something like daily active users or monthly active users. It could be customer lifetime value, the number of promoters that you have within your product. This just needs to be the main metric that you and your team needs to constantly be referring to to measure your product success. And as this metric increases, revenue should be increasing as well. When building your team for growth hacking, you wanna make sure that you have basically a representative from every area of your product or service. So you want somebody from design, you want somebody from marketing, you want somebody from development, from sales, and so on. And you'll start to see why now as we go into um, the process for growth hacking. So as you can see here, growth hacking is a continuous process of collecting experiments and ideas for growing your product. These experiments and ideas can and should come from everybody within your company or organization. Um, this should not be limited to the people that are really on your growth hacking team per se. Um, and then when an idea is uh, given to the growth hacking team, each idea should really tie to a specific lever and that can be acquisition. Um, what are the ways that you can acquire new people to your brand? Or activation, how can you better convert people from seeing your brand and coming to your webpage into your product or to accept your service? Retention, how can you ensure people stick with your brand? Uh, how quickly are they experiencing your aha moments for people? Revenue, converting users um, or leads or free users into converting paid users. And referral, with increased customer satisfaction, you develop positive word of mouth, of course, um, or do you also have things within your product such as viral loops where it's very organic for people to bring other people into your product? These ideas are then prioritized and implemented and tested and analyzed by the growth hacking team. That's why it's super important that you have a representative from each area when you go to prioritize. So you need to know if one of the ideas is a new image for your website. How many days does that take for design? How many days does that take for your web developer? If you have an idea that involves changing something in the product. How many days does that take for development? How many days does that take for testing? And then how long do you have to wait to push it out to the public in the product? So you really need every like all hands on deck when it comes to growth hacking, right? Okay, so brand building and uh, talent management. So just like you see here on the screen, behind every great and successful business, there is a team of talented people who work together to develop outstanding products or services. Market them, sell them, and generally grow your business. Without them, you really wouldn't have a business at all, right? And this is why it's important to hire the right talent to grow your company. There is a huge pool of aspiring, talented people out there, but finding those A players and those rock stars can often be a challenge for many. So a solution to this is of course, before you start hiring new employees, create a clear description of exactly what you need from them, what exactly their role looks like, and how it will fit into your overall business growth strategy, and what are the characteristics that you're looking for in this particular person as well. The right candidate will, of course, be unique for every business out there. That's why it's so important to sit down and clearly assess who you need. If someone's not a great fit, don't hire them, don't settle. The right talent is worth waiting for. And just like we discussed creating ideal customer personas for your marketing and your sales targets, you should really also create idea talent personas for each role you're looking to hire. That way you know exactly what you're looking for 
and you can ensure that you've identified the right talent to match the need that you're looking to fill. And of course, all of this now boils down to finding the right tool or software to help you accomplish everything that we talked about and run and manage all of your operations through. Ideally, it's a single tool where you can hit everything on your checklist that teams need in order to start achieving better results. So that means having real-time data analytics. So that's connecting to your different data sources and visualizing instant, mes instant metrics. Um, this needs to be something that your entire company has access to. So data cannot be just for your analysts. It needs to be for everybody so that they can use data to make better decisions. Project and task management. Um, you need to be able to track your work that you need to get done, right? So, and it needs to be in an effective way. It shouldn't be a ton of mixed in sticky notes and some things in Excel and some things on my notepad and things like that. You need a digital place where you can really manage and track all of your projects and tasks. And then you need, of course, cross team and department collaboration that allows you to keep your conversations flowing organically. And finally, manage your files in context to your work. Um, there's, for me, and I assume others on the phone or on the line, that there is nothing more annoying than searching in Outlook and trying to find that one file that you need, not knowing if it's the latest version or you're going through, we use SharePoint, endless folders of SharePoint to try to find the one file you need. Um, you really wanna be able to organize anything you need when you need it um, a lot easier. And then if that's in a single tool, um, that is even more ideal, right? So that is in fact my next webinar. Uh, so May 17th, I'm hosting another webinar. Um, I'm happy that we're able to kind of do a little mini series for all you startups as there, out there. Um, so please do join me you can uh, sign up again at slingshotapp.io. And as always, if you have any questions or you're even looking for a demo of Slingshot, do not hesitate to reach out to me. And thank you all for joining today. I look forward to seeing you on the next webinar.